So, you understand the mission statement. What are we up to today? <laughs> you are our uh, butterfly con collector. You brought the butterfly I net. I have the net. <laughs> All right. I have the net. We're going off and looking for disparate musical elements. Everything that goes over we're a gonna, beat. We've got a drum beat on the computer that we'll Sweet. record right now. Then we're going to go out in the field. We're going to go to a Greek restaurant, for example, and, and meet Petros, the bouzouki player. Opa. Then we're going to head to the west side, put some sitar on, and we're going to get a great klezmer clarinetist playing. Well, Dave's going to bring his harp. I'm going to bring my bass. So we'll just roll the beat and put everyone on top. Everyone's going to improvise, and so we're going to come back in here and see if we can make it into a song. Right, let's start with this beat here. Cool. Right, can you br bring the computer up? Rock the house, Tom, would you? All right. Ah, yeah. Yes. Cool. Simple. Simple. We can't lose with this, huh? All right. So we'll record five minutes of it, and we'll hit the road. We'll go see Petros. Let's do it. All right. Actually, what I like about this kind of music yes. is that, like other folk forms, like the blues, like uh, the Portuguese uh, fado, mm -hmm. this was the music of the underclass, of uh, uh, inmates, junkies, hashish dams, and... Uh, and so the bazooki, which has got a kind of wholesome reputation now since Never on a Sunday at Zorba the Greek, started out originally with people I'm more popular with, prostitutes, uh, thieves. And crisscross. And crisscross. Right. The hip hop. The sitar even right. has roots in the loops, and uh, so does the bazooki. They're all gourds, aren't they? Well, yes. Yes, the sitar's main body is, is a gourd, and then there's the auxiliary gourd on the neck, mm -hmm. which gives it a little more resonance, apparently. Mm -hmm. Who knew? I thought there was enough resonance in the single gourd theory. <laughs> you know, they picked off Kennedy with a gourd. <laughs> So you've been here before, right? Eh? Yeah, I love this spot. This is a great place to wait a second. <laughs> One of you guys wearing Calvin Klein oregano <laughs> cologne? <laughs> or is that Papa Christo? <laughs> Don, hey. How are you, Papa? Welcome. How are you? Papa Christo. How are you doing? Good to you. Good to have you. Chris, you. Know, Chris, good How to see are you? you? How are you? All right. You're here for? Want to hear some music, eat some food? Let's see Petros. Let's see Petros. Petros. Come on, good. follow me. Lead us in. Hello! I'm Don. Sorry to interrupt. Good to meet you. Hello. Good to meet you. Have fun today. Thank you, Papa. Thank you, Papa. How are you, brother? I'm great, thanks. I'm glad you guys are coming. Welcome to Papa Christo. My pleasure. I brought lots of instruments to show you and to share with you, to turn you guys on to Greek music. Would you like to go check them out? Let's go see what you got. Have you ever seen in the movies when the guy gets up and dances alone and kind of spins in the circle? Uh-huh. Well, he's supposed to be a drunk man dancing around an eagle, which in Greek culture is the most wonderful and pristine of birds. So he's just kind of improvising the whole thing. And as recently as like the 60s when my dad was a young man in Greece, if you paid the bazooki player to play your zebekiko and you got up and danced and anyone else got up and danced, it was completely justifiable for you to knife them. Completely. Like serious stuff. That's why they have plastic cutlery here at Papa Christo. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, like wild thing, you know that one? Yeah. Oh, yeah.
<laughs> when the beat ends, the song's over. I Thank you, that's a great That's ride. fantastic. Man. That'd be great with everyone playing on it. Today. Be so, well, I, I, yeah. yeah, I don't know. Okay, that's, thank you, yeah. yeah. I dug him, man. He, you know, he, uh, he had a deep internal groove, knew his scales, knew his rhythms. I thought he was a pretty soulful cat. So. I thought it was inspired you having him riff on Wild Thing, man. <laughs> Truly. It's the uh, it's the universe. A lot of people think it's Amazing Grace, the universal theme. Wild Thing is the uh, is the song that brings peoples together from all of the world. It's beautiful. Thank you, Dave. Wow. Well, if I had a Kleenex, I'd think of crying. But, <laughs> uh, Next, we're headed to Venice Beach uh, to meet with one of the Klez Morim. To uh, play a little clarinet, I understand, the uh, gentleman. Exactly right. I gotta tell you the truth. I love the klezmarine, but it's enough with the minor key. You want to you slit your corned beef sandwich in half when you hear too much of that stuff. But as I say, live and let live. That's Good. the whole theme of this show. God, I admire you. Oh, man. please. I wasn't looking for that. Did you know that during uh, the Nazi regime, that Hitler, amongst his other uh, forbidden laws, the, the clarinet was forbidden. <laughs> no, seriously, uh, the, the playing of the clarinet was forbidden and playing in minor scales, which was anti-Teutonic. Uh, wow. So, uh, as we say in German, das Tragen von Leder ist schon lange verboten. The wearing of leather is now forbidden. I don't know what that has to do with it, but, but you could you could substitute leather for, for clar clarinet. clarinet. Das yeah. uh, Spielen der Klarinetten <laughs> ist schon lange verboten. Yeah, I'm curious to see how the clarinet's going to fit on top of the bazooki, knowing only that we're in the key of D. Come on over. Is this where you make your noise? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, for now, we're building a new studio in the back, but, you know, for now, this is what we're going to be. I was born and raised in Argentina. I heard a lot of music growing up there. Then it mixes up with other stuff, you know, and then it loses up and, 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 and it manifests again somehow. And... Uh, but basically, is is uh, is is big struggle, you know. And he lives in the parties, like bar mitzvahs and weddings and stuff like that. And that that's where you most hear these music. And the bottom has a very earthy, beautiful sound. I believe the instrument is like the amplifier of the soul. There's like laughing sounds. And sure, sure. <laughs> You have to. I think of a string instrument when I play, mm -hmm. and the wind, the, the the speed of the air is the bow, mm -hmm. and that's how I see it. Should we try to? Uh, should we try to overdub to that thing? Yeah. yeah. Should we try to do something in D? <laughs> what a great! Well, idea. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what I can do here. I'm just like you know. Well, we're, we're gonna play this piece. Be beautiful. It's the same thing that uh, that Petrus played the bazooki too. Okay. And uh, we'll just combine it later and make Beautiful. one piece of music that no one's ever heard before. <laughs> New style. <laughs>
Happy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's oh, that's beautiful, man. That's beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much, man. It's been a real Thank you. Please. Yeah. Thank you. Please. Very yeah. pleased yeah. meeting you. Pleased and, to meet you. Yeah, that's me great. too. Well, Lemmingston, I thought it was another successful venture. I think it was really cool, man. It's, it reminds me of when we started making records, you know, that we didn't know what we were doing. You just go into a place and, you, and anything works and you're not trying to match up to the radio. You're not following the trends. You just do something that feels good because it feels good. And you know what? To walk in on someone else's domain and have this kind of generosity of spirit where, you know, without playing that cliche about music being the lingua franca, but it's true. You know, you can walk in and instantly communicate. And instantly communicate, yeah. With a laptop, we can uh, travel the world and not worry about uh, studios and uh, $1,500 a day. And It's pretty incredible. We couldn't, you couldn't have done that 10 years ago. No. It's pretty amazing. Let's put some sitar music on, the, on this track. And you know track, what? It's huh? been about two hours since we've eaten. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> That's barbecue in his yard. Yeah, okay. Barbie. <laughs> hey. Ronabir. Hey, yes. hey, David was. Pleased to meet you. David, nice to meet you. Hi, Dom. I'm Don. How are you? I'm Ronabir. Nice to meet you. This is Chris Sharma. Hey, Chris. Nice Pleasure. to meet you. Thanks hey. for having us over. Yeah, welcome. Yeah. Please uh, come in to my little uh, place. You got a whole Zen garden out here? Little studio. Yeah, <laughs> yeah make nice. yourselves at home. <laughs> You're uh, the odd man on this block playing sitar, I'd imagine. I mean, you have yeah. competition in the neighborhood or <laughs> down here on the Crenshaw district. That's what I'm talking about. Not so about. much, really. Not so much. I seem to uh, have cornered the market, you know. Not that there is a market, but I've cornered it. <laughs> Similarities and the parallels between Indian classical music and, and, and American jazz, you know. Just the, uh, the, the, the idea of improvising on a mode was really appealing right. to me. Right. The fact that there can't be any wrong notes. Right. Which isn't entirely true because in Indian classical music, there can definitely be some wrong notes. Don and I have made a career out of playing wrong notes, basically. <laughs> We're modal guys. Yeah. Cool. Where are the sympathetic strings? They're all These are the sympathetic strings here. There's two bridges on the sitar. Yeah. So this is the main bridge, which houses, houses seven strings. These are the drone strings, six drone strings, and then one melody string. I'm going to do all my melody on one this string. One melody string? Yeah. Grow your little fingernail a little bit long. That's what that's for, by the way. Yes. <laughs> In case you were wondering, had any other ideas? It's for it's playing Indian music. Oh, it's, you know, it's unavoidable. Not rock and roll in here. It's Indian music, man. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so you tune them up properly. I've got it tuned up for a nice major scale, which in Indian Let's music see, sure, we, we'd call kamaj, kamaj scale. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, what happens is when I. Uh, but because I've tuned tuned them like that to to uh, represent those notes on top, when I when I play the uh, the corresponding note on top, the two strings underneath that are tuned to that vibrate sympathetically. Wow! I'm just making this up. play a morning raga, is it both have a scale of its own and also a kind of a message or a, an idea behind it, or is it? Uh, well, you know, the, the, the roughest, most uh, sort of basic translation of raga is mood. So that's why a lot of ragas are four times a day, but there are also ragas for like, like the monsoon season has a raga. You know, that's that's a it's kind of a season, and it's a quality of weather. You know, and it's a, a air quality, but it's certainly you know nothing sets the mood more than the time of day or you know what the weather's like. You know. Wow, beautiful. Yeah, so, yeah, you know we've been doing all day. We we we've been out to to, uh, to Papa Christos, and we we did some uh, bazooki and. Uh, Went over on the west side and and uh, did some klezmer clarinet. And we've just been been building a track on top of a groove, having everyone and we'll put it all together. See if we can come up with some chemistry that never cool. existed before. So we would just flip on this groove and we'll all play something together. Nice, yeah. All right, now now what are you, are you tuned? Can we play in D? 
Yeah, that's going to be a problem for me. It is a problem. Yeah, I'm, I'm sitting comfortably here in C sharp, and you know. And they're like 19 strings to 20, 20, 20 strings. 20 strings. Yeah, well, 18, I think, is the Chris, cutoff any point. Any solution on your side? <laughs> we can drag it up later after we do it. Let's so just do it in C sharp. Playing C sharp in the two. All right. Yeah. M modern technology. Deal. Let's look it up. Yeah. And we're never more than 10 miles from home. It's pretty crazy, huh? Pretty crazy. The world's within worlds here in L.A. Yeah, and great musicians, all of them, too. Yep. Well, we got, we got, uh, Mizuki. Yes, we have Mizuki. Got, we got Klezmer clarinet. We got the sitar. I think the only thing we may be missing is an oud. You know what? I think there's time to catch the 814 to Istanbul. There's a, uh... Ood master there. They call him the dude with the ood. <laughs> the dude. <laughs> I'm serious. Chris, you ready? Let's go. Let's <laughs> hit. <laughs> That's yeah. beautiful. Man. <laughs> we gotta get a new drummer, man. <laughs> yeah, right. We gotta fire that guy. He just plays the same thing over and over again. He doesn't even listen to us. <laughs> Well, I know the first order of business here before we can do anything is we, we have to raise the key on, yeah, on the sitar. Yeah, let's get the sitar in yeah. the right spot. Great. I think we have to move it up a half step. He was tuned down That's to C right. sharp and, and everybody right. else played in D. You're adulterating the man's work. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, seriously, the sitar scales are such. One's for the, I mean, this could have karmic repercussions. <laughs> yeah, in this case especially. <laughs> so right before the, the clarinet started, David played that little groove there. Right. right. So let's I see. got it. All right, so let's just let's just take that. You want to do a loop of that? Yeah, let's loop, let's loop okay. it. Yeah. Put the drums. Drums in the... Oh, that's good. That little clear neck bit is great there, too. That's yeah. perfect. Sweet. That's very funky, man. That's good, huh? <laughs> All right, now let's see what we can do with that bazooka. Makes you yeah. hungry for lamb chops, <laughs> okay? <laughs> this is, that's really good. That's like a rhythm guitar part. I, I, I wish we had Sweet Pea to sing this now, man. I can, oh, that's you know, interesting. You know, Sweet Pea always sings this line. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know what I'm going to do this evening. <laughs> like, if I call him, and could you write some lyrics for me? Okay. Put a gun to my head, yeah, man. I'll work. <laughs> so, yeah, sure. So I figure like we got all this traditional stuff going on. Right. We could offset it with some like sci-fi madness yes, instead please. of play it straight. Okay. So, yesterday I filled my veins with static from a radio, which <laughs> I do just Regular. to get I've the morning going. I know. Yeah. That, right. <laughs> David. <It's> sweet bee. <laughs> Wow, when'd you get out of prison, dog? <laughs> I don't put my hand in shit, sir. How <laughs> are you, gentlemen? Excuse me, Pepe, I don't mean no. No, I didn't think so. Watch the game. I, don't, don't I told you, I don't put my hand in shit. I feel my veins. And <laughs> hey, now there's worse to come. Just wait. No, I mean, yesterday I feel my veins. With static from a radio. What's that? <laughs> it turned my brains some kind of bright yellow. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I don't know what I'm gonna do this evening. <laughs> That's <Yeah>. beautiful. <laughs> Thank you.
Said they have tapped my vines With static from a radio It turned my brains Some kind of bright yellow I don't know I don't know I don't know What I'm gonna do this evening I don't know I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, what I'm gonna do this evening, hey.